Oh, wow. <laughs> a little cut shell action there. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we're going to be talking about a very unique and very special firearm. This is a Greener GP shotgun. Uh, really, really awesome Martini Action 12 gauge shotgun. This is a, an old Greener Deluxe. This one's about a 39, so it's an early Greener. Uh, they produced this particular gun for quite a few years, from around the turn of the century, I want to say around 1910, maybe a little earlier, on up through the 70s. It's been a wildly popular gun, a greener general purpose, what GP stands for. This is a 12 uh, gauge, two and three quarter inch chamber gun. Uh, a lot of the early riot guns that were put out there by Greener were intended for police use and things like that. A lot of full stock version of these guns uh, were out there. I'm sure you guys are uh, familiar with a popular movie called Jaws, where they pull out a uh, Greener shotgun that's been converted into a harpoon launcher. So a lot of these were converted into uh, harpoon and line launchers. Very, very cool gun. Nice thing about a gun like this being a, a breech-loaded martini-style action, you can shoot a wide variety of different ammunition, which I'm about to demonstrate. What busted that soda bottle there, that was a cut shell. We just give a little twist of the knife on a federal target load, put it right in there. See, one of the things about cut shells that kind of limits you a little bit is the action that you use. It's hard to feed them through a magazine tube, but a gun like the Greener is awesome because you really aren't limited by anything other than what you can stuff down it. These are uh, smokeless guns. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, y'all are seeing me shoot smokeless ammo. This is a smokeless proofed uh, gun, unlike a lot of the early Martinis, like the uh, Martini Henrys and the Snyders and things. This is a completely different animal. It is a Martini style action, but it is a modern uh, style gun. So we're going to shoot it a little bit more. All right, how about another cut shell? All right, that one didn't quite come apart, but it still took that bottle for a ride there. How about some Aguila mini slugs? See that little guy there? Again, drop it in. This is a safety located on the right. Every time you cock the action, the safety automatically applies. So you shoulder the gun, flip off the safety. All right. Not too shabby. Although I missed, which is horrible. Let's try again. There we go. All right, I'm gonna pick up the pace here. All right, really simple operation. You see how fast I'm running the gun? That was just with some Aguila mini shells. We are going to step up to some uh, <laughs> stupid, powerful things here in a moment. This uh, gun is proof for a one and one quarter ounce smokeless load. I've got some uh, Berniki Green Lightnings. It's a high brass uh, slug. You saw how I was just kind of stroking those out, but check this out. Oh, this is not fun. <clears throat> That's a little hot right there. Probably don't want to feed this gun a steady diet of that. That's a high brass one and one quarter ounce slug, but the gun will take it. All right, so no problem there. Uh, this gun is a takedown. Uh, one of the interesting points about it, basically you pull smartly on the lever, pull it all the way down. The extractor will open and you just take your Swiss Army knife or whatever, give that uh, screw on the side a little turn, which I'm not gonna take it apart, but then the gun you just screw the barrel off and you're good. Pretty cool there. I'm gonna try to launch in a couple at kind of longer range. This straight comb stock, buddy, it, it kicks. Now, you can see the carrying energy of that slug knocking the target right over. Now these don't really wanna eject quite as briskly, but in a field situation, if you're hunting deer or whatever, that'd be one dead deer. Let's try the plate back at 70 yards. Just a little low, well centered. 
Well, that one got out of there just fine. One of the nice things about a greener is that they generally shoot slugs so good. They pattern birdshot and buckshot excellent, as I'm about to demonstrate. Got a couple of uh, federal loads here. This is a federal target load and a seven and a half bird. I'm just gonna launch a few of these plates right here. Uh, I've got a plate out there kind of far away. I'm gonna just see how it patterns at kind of longer distance. These guns are known for their just beautiful tight patterns that they shoot. I mean, that target's 40 yards away, but if I was shooting at a clay, pretty sure I would have busted that clay. I'm gonna try slightly closer. I'm gonna shoot that uh, a little popper back there. He's about 30 yards away. We'll see how this federal groups on that popper. That is a very, very tight spread out of the greener here. These guns were generally uh, meant to be used as kind of a, a gentleman's trap gun. Somebody didn't want to really spend a ton of money. They were meant to be kind of a somewhat entry level, somewhat uh, economy minded trap gun for people that want to be able to shoot shotguns. And they couldn't afford a, you know, three or $4,000 Holland and Holland or something like that. But you still want to go out to the club and have fun with the guys. This was a great gun for that, to be able to go out and get that fix. What I see it for in uh, today's world, not only is it an awesome collectible, but a gun like this is great for somebody that wants to scratch the martini itch and shoot a martini without having to go through all of the hassle of loading 577 450 to shoot a regular uh, military martini, Henry. Um, this is a great way to do that. Just make sure if you are gonna get a greener shotgun, make sure it's not a short chamber uh, greener. A lot of these guns have intermediate chamber lengths, and the, uh, <laughs> the weird thing about it, we're kind of getting off on a completely different topic, but some versions of these greeners were made with shorter chambers, so they wouldn't chamber standard service ammunition. They provided special ammunition so that if a shotgun was stolen, or a cop or somebody got killed and they took the shotgun, they couldn't use commercially available ammunition in the gun. They had to have special ammunition, actually had a dual pronged firing pin and this crazy system where it would not chamber a standard round. This is not to be confused with one of those guns. This is an actual GP that was made as a, a specific sporting gun for uh, sporting purposes. Uh, you can tell a GP deluxe model by the checkered stock. It's got beautiful checkering on the stock and everything like that. Anyway, we're going to run it a little more. Got a couple of estate number eight loads. We'll see how these pattern. Let's see. Try that 40 yard gong again. Looks like it's about the same as a Federal. You know, pattern in shotguns is kind of one of those things. Might be out of the scope of this video, but. <laughs> That's great. All right, we got some more cut shells. Tell you what, we're gonna launch a few cut shells in about 70 yards down here. Hopefully these work. Ah, last one's a charm. Oh well, not bad. We can see looking down range there about 75 yards, we stacked about five or six cut shells there into a nice tight little pattern right on the center of the gong. It shoots directly to the point of aim of the sights. You put that bead on whatever you want to shoot with a greener, they shoot slugs so well. And that's not even a slug, that's a cut shell. Uh, but we do have some slugs. Now we already shot a couple of the uh, green lightnings. We'll see how it does with buckshot. Now this is some of the federal uh, flight control buckshot ammo. We are pretty close to some of these targets, so I may not uh, you know, shoot this steel this close with this particular load, but I wanna show how well they handle buckshot too. 
All right, I'm gonna shoot that popper. He's about 15 yards from me. See if we can keep all the pellets right there on that, that little guy. This is a reduced recoil round. This is the low velocity version. It's just, you can run one of these things so fast. Right in the center. You know, at combat ranges, it's definitely not a combat shotgun by any stretch of the imagination, but you won't find a more fun shotgun to shoot than one of these greeners for just everyday plinking. Uh, let's kill our little gopher down there. There you go. All right, how about another uh, stretch here? This is a military breaching round. Again, going to the utility of a shotgun, this greener, general purpose. Now what's more general purpose than a gun that can really eat anything that says 12 on it? So let's try a breacher. There you go. All right, how about beanbag rounds? All right, these are Wolf Hill Trading Company uh, beanbag rounds. So what if you got a problem uh, guy right in front of you and you wanna launch a beanbag round at him? You know, I'm gonna shoot the one in front of me, but first I'm gonna hit one of these D28s here. All right, so greener shotgun with a beanbag round. All right, now I'm gonna shoot this one right in front of me right here. Now this is just a bean bag. I wouldn't do this with a slug or something like I did earlier. There you go. That's your, uh, <laughs> your less than lethal option. All right, here's a Wolf Hill Trading Company 385 grain ceramic bound metal dust breaching round. Let's try a couple of these. That was kind of weird. Let's see what else we got here. Firestorm incendiary slug from Wolf Hill Trading. We'll see how these work. And guys, we're just kind of spitballing here. I hope you can see this video. We're just shooting a hodgepodge of random stuff here just to see what happens. These guns are just so much fun. Well, I had a gong, now I don't. <laughs> Let's try one out there at 75 yards. Not too bad there. I guess we can uh, launch one of these green lightnings out there. See how that does. Boy, steady diet of these, not fun. Especially this gun's relatively lightweight. So, something to consider. Man. I don't know if I'd want a steady diet of that. <laughs> well, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. This was meant to just be a look at a really, really interesting historical type gun. Uh, these are relatively affordable. They're not that expensive in the big scheme of things. So it's a martini that um, a lot of folks ask me about different martini rifles and you know what what can I get into for fair money or what can I buy that I can shoot and I get a lot of questions about the martini style actions and if you want a martini to just take out and shoot and have fun with and something that's that is actually uh, obtainable in terms of uh, being able to get them and they shoot smokeless and everything like that really the greener GP is the way to go uh, yeah these guns aren't terribly common they're out there 
Uh, when you can find them, they're generally not too terribly expensive. You can find them here and there. Uh, they're not exactly all over the place, but if you look hard, they're out there. Um, but just a wonderful gun. Uh, I really enjoyed making this video. You can see it pretty much ate everything on the table that I could throw at it. And that is really, in my opinion, what general purpose lends itself to. It's a general purpose gun. It was meant to be an easy gun to be able to just grab whatever you can find, put it in the gun, shoot it. Uh, it patterns uh, birdshot and buckshot beautifully. I would pit this against any modern trap gun any day. Really, really cool. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.